Well, folks, the NASDAQ has been shredded, and I want to show you exactly what's going on in this video. I want to take you through new data that has come out here that I want to show you guys. And um, we're going to go through this, and I really want to go in depth on kind of showing you what's been happening in the NASDAQ. Now, I'm talking shredded, not like my hair shredded, but I'm talking about stock prices going down. And uh, we, on this channel, we've talked a lot over the past several months about the Russell, right? And we've talked about small cap stocks, meaning stocks that are $5 billion or under specifically in market capitalization. What has happened to those stocks? And we've gone through, you know, uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of these stocks that have just, you know, done horrible, right? Down 50, 60, 70, 80% from all-time highs. Some of these companies have bad business models. Some of these companies have no business models. Some of them have good business models, and some of them have great long-term prospects for their business models, right? But it really doesn't matter. It's almost every single small cap has fallen, but the NASDAQ as well. And so we're going to talk about this. I'm going to show you this data in this video. Then we're going to get into if I think we're close to a bottom when it comes to this, what's the next leg, those sorts of things. Hope you guys enjoy this. As always, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you're not, it's absolutely free to do so. If you're looking to join my private stock group, learn directly from me be part of the private discord chat check out pin comment down there and the hungry bowl make sure you download the hungry bowl that is uh, our app which is absolutely free to use the hungry bowl and that's a way to track your stocks cryptos keep up with what's going on in the market we cover breaking news in there you can listen to earnings calls do so much more it's awesome the hungry bowl okay so the idea for this video uh came from mainstream uh, financial media, which is starting to pick up on some of this stuff now, right? We've been talking about, you know, the, how small caps have been getting devastated for months, but it seems like even, you know, mainstream's really starting to catch on. This comes out of Yahoo Finance today. The NASDAQ is quietly being shredded. New data. Underneath the surface, the tech stock heavy NASDAQ composite is being shredded as traders fret about higher interest rates from the Federal Reserve this year. Nearly 40% of the stocks on the exchange have been cut in half, meaning at least 50% decline according to new research from Sundial Capital Research. The research firm notes that this kind of trading action on the NASDAQ hasn't been seen since at least 1999, okay? That's how intense it has gotten. And here we are in the situation where, you know, unless you're really into the markets, no one's noticed this. No one's noticed this because the indexes have held up. But meanwhile, beneath the surface, it's kind of like, you know, imagine you have like a sinkhole, right? And like the surface still looks fine, but underneath it, like everything's eroding and it's just like, you know, and no one's noticing because it still looks all okay. Unless you're really like, you know, you, you can see under the ground, right? And you kind of realize what's going on. And that's this whole situation. Some of the largest tech sell-offs have been seen as momentum favorites among traders. Streaming media player Roku has seen a stock crash 40% in the past three months. And, uh, you know, obviously Moderna is down 30% during the same stretch. Look at this, this chart here. This shows you percent of stocks down 20% from 52-week highs, okay? Look at this. Nearly two-thirds of NASDAQ stocks are already in bear markets. Think about that for a moment. The last thing on anybody's mind right now, if you're just paying attention to the overall markets, is, oh, we're in a bear market. If you're just looking at the indexes, you think everything is great. We're doing tremendous. We're not in no bear market, man. We're in a bull market. And meanwhile, when you go just a little layer beneath, you realize two-thirds of NASDAQ stocks are already in bear market. The percent of stocks down 20% plus from 52-week highs is astronomically high. Look at this. You know, we're, we're approaching 70% of stocks in the NASDAQ are down 20% or more from 52-week highs, guys. That's a large number. You know, last time you had a number like this, you had to go back to the Roni Rona crash. Before that, you had to go to the, you know, uh, the dramatic uh, 2018 crash in late 2018. Before that, you had to go all the way back to election time, 2016-ish. And before that, you had to go all the way back to, you know, around 2012, 2011, okay? So, nonetheless, this doesn't happen very often, but when it happens, it is very, very painful. Very, very painful. The trading action doesn't bode well for the NASDAQ this year, the research shows, when at least 35% of the stocks are down by half. On the NASDAQ, the index has been down an average of 47%. And this is, this is I mean... This is just like fries your brain, right? Because you're like looking at this and you're like, wait a minute. Naxx looks so great on face level, yet two-thirds are in bear market, two-thirds of stocks on it. And it's like, oh my gosh, okay? 
Top investing minds suggest a sell-off in buzzy tech names shouldn't be a surprise given the changing dynamics of Fed policy and elevated valuations. But the thing is, when you dive a little deeper here, and I want to take you guys through a lot of stocks here, okay? And what I'm going to take you through here is larger market caps too. All these stocks I'm going to show you are $10 billion market caps or bigger, okay? $10 billion market caps or bigger. So we're not even going to look at small caps, which is what we cover, you know, a lot on the channel uh, very recently. And what you're also going to find is, is a lot of these stocks I'm about to share with you, they aren't even necessarily the, the buzzy tech names, okay? And then we'll get into kind of my feelings on if we're close to a bottom, not even close to a bottom, those sorts of things. But yeah, a lot of these stocks aren't even buzzy tech names, okay? Look at GoodRx. GoodRx, a prescription company that, you know, helps you save money on your prescriptions. So this company... You know, definitely I would not call it a buzzy tech name at all, but look at it. It's look at how far off its 52 week highs. 52 week highs around $60. Is that 26? It's over 50% off its 52 week high for a company that's a little over a $10 billion market cap. And once again, this is not some, you know, buzzy tech company that like everybody had piled into because it was the hot stock, right? This is not a Zoom stock or a Peloton or something like that, okay? This is good RX, and the stock price has just been devastated, man. I mean, that's that's awful. The business has been executing. Like, if you look at the numbers of this company, I've been tracking the numbers the last couple of quarters. It's in a pretty dang healthy spot. Not a stock I personally own, but I would say the numbers have been pretty impressive, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in this sort of market. It's kind of just like, throw it out right now. If you, if you can't slap a PE on it at the moment, you know, a lot of investors just haven't wanted a piece of these stocks right now. Now, the, the market goes through some of these time periods when, you know, all of a sudden no one cares about, or, you know, folks only want to be in stocks that have a PE. But then all of a sudden, most of the time you figure out, like, no one ever actually really cares that much about PE, and it's really about forward PE, if anything, okay? Uh, but anyways, that, that's the situation with GoodRx. Look at Alibaba, obviously. Anybody that's been in Alibaba stock has gotten absolutely devastated, unless they got in very, very recently when it comes to this one, right? 52-week high, 274. This obviously a multi-100 billion dollar market cap the biggest big dog out of china company's a beast the business model is a beast but it's, it's just a devastated stock right no one wants a piece of chinese stocks right now let's be quite honest and this obviously you know it still holds pretty big weight in a lot of the indexes but not like it used to right and uh i mean the valuation looks just silly low on this company but it doesn't matter you know no one wants a piece of chinese stocks right now and so a stock like this it's just not the play, right? Um, if all of a sudden uh, China tensions ease and things kind of, you know, get back just decent, you know, Alibaba can easily go back over 200, but, that, you know, we, that still needs to kind of play out there. Look at a stock like Palantir, a $30 billion plus dollar company. This stock peaked out at $45. It's 16 bucks there today. 16 bucks. You know, that's what, a 60% plus decline there in the stock price from 52-week highs? The stock price has just been absolutely devastated. And it's not like investors haven't been impressed by the quarterly numbers. Quarterly numbers have actually been really impressive from Palantir. But it doesn't matter. Where's the PE on the stock, right? You can't throw a PE on it right now. And people are like, ah, I don't want a piece of that one, right? And so even a beautiful, you know, long-term huge growth story like a Palantir, people just don't want that type of stock right now. And when I say people, I'm really talking about obviously fund managers and big money because they're really the ones that run the market. Retail investors might like Palantir, but retail investors don't run the market at the end of the day. The big money is what runs the market, and that's what, you know, really dictates whether these stock prices go up or down, right? And so look at a Palantir. It's just, it's just tough, tough sledding there for Palantir. PayPal, I mean, you know... This is not some buzzy stock. This is a great, gigantic corporation that has unbelievable growth. And it's a two, it's a multi-hundred billion dollar market cap, like, kind of like an Alibaba. But the difference is PayPal's an American company. It's not like this is a Chinese stock. You have to worry about delisting and all that drama. And look at, Ali, look at PayPal. I mean, the stock has just fallen off a cliff. I mean, just simply fallen off a cliff from 310 to very recently, it's been trading near 52-week lows for PayPal. Are you kidding me? I mean, one of the best business models out there. And it's just, it's been a devastated stock. Like you think it would be the end of the world for PayPal. Look at Square. You want to talk about even a worse situation? That's Square. Square is now down over 50% from 52-week highs. Now, 52-week high was 289. And right now, the stock's now trading at 141. For Square, 
you know, uh, this is another one that's caught up in kind of the Bitcoin demise, right? We, we've seen Bitcoin fall quite dramatically recently. Bitcoin, I was looking at it this morning, it was in the 41,000 range now. And so Square gets caught up into a lot of that. And if Bitcoin goes down, right now it's pulling down Square stock. Plus you have kind of this whole situation going on with the NASDAQ and growth stocks in general and high PE names or no PE names. At least Square has a PE, but it is a high PE. And it's just, it's obviously just not a, not a good fit at the moment, right? A long-term investors are loving this uh, as far as long-term investors in Square that are really in this for the, the next five, 10 years. But everybody else is like looking at this and they're like, oh, this is awful, okay? Look at Uber, Uber did Uber stock, okay? Stock peaked out at 64, it's 41 today. I mean, you know, that's what a 35, 40% decline, something like that in Uber stock now. And I mean, Uber, if you look at their actual business model, it's just going to get better and better now that, you know, uh, especially in 22, as we progress throughout the year, travel will return in a much bigger way throughout the year. Uh, Uber rides will return in a much bigger way. Uber Eats will still continue to thrive. Plus, they're going to have Uber delivery expanded out. And so Uber, I mean, this is a company that's in a pretty good spot over the coming years, in my personal opinion, for at least the next five years from 22 all the way to 27. But, you know, where, where's the PE? That, that's, what, that's what matters right now in this market, right? Where's the PE? Like I said, then when things flip, they're going to flip the other way and they'll go really, really quickly. Uh, but for right now, it's, it's all about PEs, right? And that's, once again, look at Uber's an 80 plus billion dollar market cap. Huge company, right? Look at Zoom. Zoom's a 50 plus billion dollar market cap. This stock's, you know, from 451 to 171 dollars here today. Woo-wee! Uh, well, I mean, what is that, a 65, 70% decline, something like that in the stock price? I mean, that's just simply devastating for the stock, or at least 60%, right? I mean, that's just devastating for the stock to, to have fallen like this. Now, with Zoom, at least this is one of those buzzy stocks, right, that really got caught into the hype of last year. So at least you can make that argument for Zoom. You know, most of these stocks you can't really make that argument for, but at least you can say, hey, Zoom was caught up in all that. The thing that's interesting with Zoom is this company went from being arguably one of the most overvalued companies a couple of years ago, especially in 2020, when their numbers were still really bad as far as profitability went and the stock price was super high, to now it's actually gotten a little compelling. I mean, the 4P is under 40 for the stock. And, um, you know, it's not, it doesn't trade nearly at the price to sales ratios it used to trade at. And so, I don't know, it's actually a little little compelling. I, the thing with me with Zoom is I still haven't been able to find if this is more than just a one-trick pony company. I've done a lot of research in this one, and I'm like, man, it just feels like a, a business video conferencing play. And that's cool, but it's just it feels like it's ripe for disruption if that's all you can be, right? They've got to build, build a whole ecosystem. They're trying to, but it just seems like I, I haven't seen them really like make great strides as far as like, you know, revenues, uh, profitability, anything outside of just their, their traditional kind of, you know, business model there. But yeah, that stock's been absolutely devastated. All right. Now, next component I want to talk about is the weight of the NASDAQ and how these stocks are weighted, because this is really, really important to understand why the indexes are holding up well. And then we'll get into essentially, if I believe we're, we're close to a bottom in a lot of these stocks or, or, you know, still a long way away. Okay. So when you look at the, the, the weight, I think the next question for the NASDAQ, right, and just kind of the overall markets, S&P 500 as well, and the Dow for that matter, right? The next question is, do these big dogs fall? Because these big dogs are what dictate the stock market at the end of the day. These are what's held up the indexes to make everything look better than it really is, okay? This is like the analogy I gave at the beginning of the video. This is like, you know, imagine the street. It's just holding it up, and uh, right below it, there's just a big sinkhole underneath it, just waiting for this street to kind of collapse. And this is a street, okay? This is the little bit of uh, you know asphalt there that's kind of holding up the whole thing. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Tesla, Nvidia, Google, Broadcom, Cisco, Netflix, Adobe, Costco, Pepsi, and Comcast. These are holding the entire market up right now. And the next question is, are these the next stocks to fall? Essentially. Well, I have some bad news and good news. Apple's trading extremely rich based upon any you know past valuations. That one's a little scary. Microsoft, same exact situation. Okay, so you have a little little bit to worry about there. The good news is for Amazon, this stock hasn't moved really in in a long time. I mean, August August of 2020, August of 2020, this stock was thirty four hundred dollars, and it's thirty two hundred dollars here in January of 2022. Okay. So the good news is Amazon hasn't really been doing much. The good news is Facebook's really undervalued. 
Uh, Tesla is obviously trading rich, but at the same time, Tesla always trades rich. So I wouldn't say there's as much to worry about there because that's one of those stocks. It could be $500 a year from now. It could be $2,000. You know, and that one's still in price discovery mode. NVIDIA, NVIDIA is definitely trading rich. Okay, no doubt about that. Google McDougal, not so much. Look at the Google's forward P. It's not, not super high in my opinion at all. Uh, Broadcom, Cisco, I don't really cover those, so I can't really speak on those. Although Cisco, I would, I would bet is probably doesn't have a rich... Uh, 4P on it. Usually Cisco just kind of trades cheap. Netflix is trading rich, but Netflix always trades really rich. Like that's no, that's no news to us. Like we all know that, right? Adobe trades at a premium to the market, but Adobe always tr- trades at a premium to the market. Costco, I mean, that one, you know, trades rich, but it always trades rich. You know why? Because they put up ridiculous numbers. I saw just recently, it was like a 14% comp number. It's tremendous. PepsiCo is PepsiCo. And Comcast, I don't really cover that one, so I can't speak on that one specifically, okay? So when you look at this, it's kind of a mixed bag when you look at the weighting. Because some of these stocks, you can make a very strong argument that they're undervalued. Some of these stocks, you can make an argument that they're overvalued. And some of these, you're, you're, pretty, you're pretty in line. So you're kind of getting a mixed bag here. And that's why it's hard to predict necessarily a downfall from the NASDAQ. Because, I mean, Facebook's a, a deal steal at, at the current price at 300 I mean, if this stock falls to 200 something, it's just a silly pricing at that, that moment, right? If Google was to drop 20, you know, Google's, Google, Google's a pretty good deal right here. If Google stock falls, Google McDougal falls 10, 15%, it's a steal deal. You know, if Tesla pulls back 20%, I mean, you know how many people are going to be out there buying Tesla shares? So th- that's an interesting thing. When you look at some of these companies, it's like, well, yeah, some of them are, are trading rich, but, you know, some of them are, are, are not trading that rich. Amazon stock hasn't moved in a year and a half. You know, and, and, and we know Amazon's just getting into a bigger and bigger beast, right? And so Amazon could actually represent a really good opportunity in the market right now. I, I feel like actually Amazon's a pretty easy money over the next several years in the market, over the next, you know, five years. So that's where you get in this conflicting situation where you're looking and you're like, and this is why it, I can't predict that the NASDAQ's going to fall 15, 20%. I can't make that prediction. If every stock was valued the way Apple and Microsoft are, are, are valued, I'd be saying, yeah, there's a decent high probability. It could be very possible that these stocks stagnate. A lot of these stocks stagnate for a year. They catch up with another year of profitability, right? And then the, the valuation metrics all come down for these stocks. That's definitely very much a realistic possibility that I think folks should consider. You don't always need stocks to crash to get them to more fair in-line valuations. Never mind, if some of these stocks stagnated for a year while they made great progress in their business, and then they would just become extremely undervalued in that sort of market, right? Look at this. This one puts it easiest for us, right? This one, it's, it's back from, you know, the middle of December, but not a lot's changed since then. And basically, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, NVIDIA, Google, McDougal, and, and Facebook made up 52% of the weight in the NASDAQ 100. In the NASDAQ, guys, think about that. Those few companies, right? To some points up, the S&P 500 is heavily weighted toward technology-related stocks, and 50% of the NASDAQ 100 is made up of only eight stocks. Think about that for a moment. Therefore, the S&P 500 has been led by just a few large tech-related names. In fact, the same eight largest NASDAQ stocks make up 27% of the S&P 500. In other words, more than a quarter of the market index's performance is coming from eight stocks out of the possible 504 index components. It's in, and why is it NAS, why is the SP 500 with this 504 components? Okay, that's why I have the question. But it's 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 tr- it's insane, right? And so they're holding this kind of the whole market up right now. So in my personal opinion, I think we're closer to a bottom in these stocks than a top in these stocks. Let's put it that way. Well, definitely not anywhere close to a top, right? We're much much closer to a bottom, and I think the the one thing we need to just let play out now is these earnings over the next several quarters. I think as long as earnings are okay or decent with a lot of these companies i think a lot of these 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 stocks are are poised to go up rapidly right a lot of these nasdaq stocks and several obviously that are smaller cap stocks i think that's kind of the next kind of waiting game here the fed's going to do what the fed's going to do i think if anything the fed in 22 will end up not raising rates as much or uh you know maybe only raising once or twice in 22 i don't think that's you know a lot of people are thinking four times now I think it's a realistic possibility that the Fed only raises one or two times now. And if this sort of situation plays out there, right, what's that going to mean for stocks, obviously, right? And so these are things that, you know, a lot of folks aren't even, aren't, aren't even considering right now that I'm thinking about. And I'm like, you know, so obviously you guys know where my chips are placed on the table. But uh, yeah, I would say we're much closer to a bottom than a top. 
Um, just the question is, do does Apple and Microsoft kind of come down, or do they just kind of stagnate for a year and let uh, valuations kind of catch up there? So, uh, anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to download the Hungry Bowl. If you want to check out my private stock group, the private Discord chat, check out pin comment down there to apply for that. Much love and have a great day.